goes to William. All right, so my usual Monday routine, when it's a normal week, and I haven't had a normal week in a while. Uh, in the morning, I have a little brief two-minute warm-up routine, uh, and I try to do 100 push-ups, sort of <laughs> spaced however I can, but uh, lately what I've been doing is two sets of 20 and one set of 10, spaced out 30 seconds, minute and a half off, then another 20, 20, 10, and able to do it in about eight minutes. Let's see what I'm able to do today. Do my push-ups on a rack uh, to help protect my wrists. But what I found is if I do push-ups simply, uh, just hands directly on the floor, my my wrists get a little sore after a while. Ten more. Finished 112 minutes and 6 seconds, and I started at 3 minutes and 40 seconds after the warm-up. So, 8.5 minutes, that's about right. Okay, it's Tuesday, which means that for my home routine, I've got a like a 15 minute core routine that uh, that I do. As long as I'm here, let me show you a couple things. Credit my <clears throat> coffee table with evidence of children. That is from where I broke my ankle in 2007. I wish I had a great story. I just slipped on ice, put my foot down uh, to try to correct, came down at a screwy angle, heard and felt a crunch, down I went. Two rounds of surgery, one to put in, eight screws in a plate, and one to take them out. It's not a lot of fun. The experience of having the boot really did some kind of nasty things to my legs. 
wound up getting cellulitis and plus the break, I, I wound up developing some edema and so on and so forth. And as you can see, I've got scars all over them. And at some point the edema spread to my left leg. And as I got heavier, my ankles really um, started to swell up badly. And it was frankly really scary because there didn't seem to be anything I could do about it. My doctor prescribed compression socks and they, I, I, I wound up not being able to wear them uh, because I, I, I got an allergic reaction to them. And like five minutes after taking them off, everything had swelled back up anyway. It wasn't until I took, started taking off weight that the swelling really went away. But you can see on my left leg, I've got scarring there too from the same issues. And then I have kind of a janky left knee. I was coming up from a wall sit about three years ago, heard and felt a pop. And uh, it hasn't quite been the same since. It's not terrible. I'm able to run on it without too much of a problem. Sometimes if it feels a little unstable and it's not as flexible as I'd like. And then I've got, I've got some kind of ugly vein issues as well from, let's be honest about it, the abuse that I have put my body through for much of the last 20 years. Well, that is to say, uh, I will never have sexy legs again. Uh, some of the damage can't be undone, but I'm, I'm doing I'm doing what I can to fix what I can. Okay, I warm up again. Okay, so... The core routine is important because of something I talked about called diastasis recti. And let me show you. So, if you notice, when I start to come up in a crunch, see this? The, the, there's sort of a dome or a little football that kind of pops up in the middle of my stomach. So that's because my abs, these muscles here have separated. And so there's, a sep there's sort of a gap kind of from feeling it right here to right here. And so when they contract, they don't stay together and stuff kind of pops up in the middle of the, in the middle of the gap, in the middle of the separation. And I have no idea, well, I say I have no idea exactly how that happened. There are any number of ways it could have happened. It just could have been the result of me being overweight. There are a number of things that could have happened. It's more, I guess it's mostly common in postpartum women, but men do get it. And so here, we, here I am, here's, I'm a man with a diastasis recti, um, and I've been working on addressing it for almost the last five years. It is a lot better now than where it was when I started working with a, a rehab specialist on it. So the, the separation right now is basically from here to here. Um, when I started, it was more like from here to here. Um, and some of that was because I was 100 pounds heavier. But uh, anyway, I have to be very, very conscious of um, my posture. And I also have to be very, very conscious of making sure I'm, in, I'm engaging and strengthening my core. So it's like getting up out of this position. I can't do this. I have to roll over on my side and get up that way. Because the more you sort of engage those muscles without being conscious of the, the diastasis, the worse the diastasis gets. And so along similar lines, if I'm getting up like this, I've got to make sure I've got my core engaged. If I'm lifting something, I've got to make sure my core is engaged and so on and so forth. So I've got this little floor routine of exercises that I do to help with my core. In an ideal week, and I don't have a lot of ideal weeks just because reasons. In theory, I, I alternate between the push-ups and the core. So this week, in theory, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the push-ups, Tuesday, Thursday is the core, and then next week it would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the core, Tuesday, Thursday, the push-ups. But like I say, 
I don't have a lot of ideal weeks, so I kind of got to do what I can when I can do it and take it as it comes. There we are. Basically, I have to <clears throat> I have to make sure my core is engaged as I raise my head to make sure my my abs close properly on the way up. And in theory, eventually I will be able to get up from that a little further, a little further, you know, stretching my hands towards my knees. But I gotta say, it's been a long road. Who knows? Just, who knows? Okay, I got 10 more. All right, so then I, I do three sets of a five exercise routine that is 35 seconds of planking followed by 25 seconds rest, 35 seconds of leg lifts, 25 seconds rest, 35 seconds side plank, 25 seconds rest, 35 seconds walkouts, 25 seconds rest, 35 seconds the other side for planks. Done. Two more to go. Okay. And that's my that's my core routine. So there we go. Something I should say. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not pretending to be a personal trainer here. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not encouraging anybody to follow my model, whatever that means. All I'm doing here is sharing my story, and um, in, in the hopes that it helps keep me accountable, and perhaps somebody else will find it useful to hear somebody like me talk openly about what I'm having to do in middle age to uh, try to undo some modicum of the damage I've done to my body over the last 20 years. So that's all. Uh, this is not any kind of vetted advice. I'm just sharing my story. And I don't know, I don't know how much I can and can't do this. Maybe I should find out, but in terms of the toolbox that I use, you probably figured out from uh, some of what I've shared already that um, I use Noom for calorie counting as well as for exercise logging and I've, I've found a lot of really wonderful recipes in Noom as well. I don't know that it would work for everybody but it's worked really well for me um, if nothing else as it's just sort of a way for me to be honest with myself. For a lot of my exercises and for a number of my meals I have uh, I, I have used Center C E N T R, um, which I find to be an absolutely fantastic resource for both meal planning as well as workout planning. And I use Runkeeper to track my runs. N none of those apps sponsor me in any way, shape, or form. I don't necessarily endorse any of them in any way, shape, or form. They've worked for me. They are tools in my toolbox. If Noom is something you might want to try, that's something I can share a link to and in full disclosure. It you know, gives you a code for a free trial. And if at the end of your free trial, you wind up signing up, that means I get a $25 Amazon gift card. So, but I, I am not endorsing, I am not endorsing Noom, nor does Noom sponsor me. That's uh, just there uh, if you find it useful.
Okay, so it's Tuesday evening. The best case scenario in a regular week, quote unquote, like I said earlier, I haven't had one of those in a while. Basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I run. Tuesday, Thursday, I go to the gym. And on Tuesdays, usually I do a 35 minute boxing routine and a half hour of jump rope. Plus I also walk to and from the gym. The gym is about a 0.9 mile walk. Soup to nuts, it's about a two hour workout from the time I leave my house to the time I get back. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little workout. So here I am and uh, let's get to it. Who is it? It's Chuck. 